Okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the Cibra Showcase Committee Call. Uh, we're having this call to mark the first stable release of Cibra uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago. My name is Pili and I'll be hosting today's committee call. So on the agenda today, we're going to have some of the engineering team members who have worked on Cibra introduce themselves and we'll give you a little bit of a background on Zebra, how it came about, the history of uh, this project that's been going on for a couple of years now. Then we're going to go into the actual showcase where we'll be demonstrating some of the features that are available in Zebra, some of them in experimental mode, but those are all available for you to um, play with right now. And then finally, we'll be asking for your help so if you want to contribute to future improvements to Zebra, you don't need to be a developer. There's lots of other ways you can participate. Uh, so without further ado, let's move on to introducing the team members. Um, so not all of them are in the engineering team, but um, there's, a, there's a few guests and uh, there's more people that are not presenting today that will not be uh, introducing themselves. Deirdre. Hi. Um, I'm Deirdre. I'm one of the old original engineers on the Z uh, Zebra project. I work on cryptography and other things. <laughs> Thank you, Deirdre. Tior. Hi, I'm Tior. I'm also one of the engineers on the Zebra project. I've been around for about three years now, and I work on network and specification conformance and a bunch of things like that. Thank you, dear. And next is me. Uh, as I mentioned before, my name is Pili. I work at the Zcash Foundation as the engineering manager. And um, this basically means I enable the engineering team to execute and um, try to keep them healthy and happy. I joined the foundation in November 2020. So it will be three years in November since I've been around. Alfredo. Uh, yes, thank you, Billy. My name is Alfredo. I work as a core developer in the Zcash Foundation for about two years and a half. Uh, from that time, I can say 95% of it is dedicated to Zebra. So I have pretty much a good expertise in almost all the Zebra code base. Thank you, Alfredo. Aria. Hey, I'm Aria. I've been at the foundation as a core engineer for about a year working on the Zebra project. And finally, uh, John, honor honorary uh, Zebra team member for today. Uh, yes, thank you, Pili. My name is John. I am the community support coordinator at the Zcash Foundation. I've been here for about eight months or so. Great. Thank you, John. So now uh, Deirdre will tell us a little bit about Zebra. Uh, hi, uh, this has been pretty cool. I've been doing a little bit of uh, history excavation and archaeology about the very beginnings of Zebra. I was there for it. Uh, when I was originally hired at the foundation in uh, uh, the first half of 2019, the idea was that we wanted, the community wanted a, an independent uh, secondary implementation of the Zcash shielded protocol, uh, as specifically a, consent, a separate consensus implementation so that the whole community was not uh, completely reliant on one uh, implementation that was a fork of Bitcoin, uh, the Zcash D implementation. Uh, mostly to distribute uh, trust within the community, we like to decentralize things uh, and have more than one implementation of a, of a completely critical uh, cryptographic uh, software implementation. So the foundation originally had scoped uh, work to Parity, who had done their own Rust implementation of Bitcoin. A couple, uh, they had started it a couple of years prior, and because. Zcash started as a fork of Bitcoin and they put some zero knowledge proofs and some other cool stuff on top of it. 
uh, it was a, a natural leap to be like, oh, well, if we would like an independent implementation and we would like to use this new modern systems programming language that gives us memory safety guarantees out of the box, um, we'll fork the Rust implementation of Bitcoin. And that's what Parity did over the course of nine-ish months, I think in 2018. And they had a delivery of all the Rust cryptography that was done by the Electric Coin Company onto their existing Bitcoin implementation in Rust. And it worked. Um, I think it was ver validating NU2 or NU3 at the, at the time. Um, but by the time it was delivered, because the code base had been started when Rust was very new and didn't have a lot of the features that Rust, when we had started looking at this code in mid-2019, had things like async and async runtimes and stuff like that, that opened up a lot of other power in Rust because of its memory safety guarantees. Um, we thought we might be able to do better. Um, I'll just share some of our uh, some of our engineering resources over here um, about the kind of how Zebra works. So um, myself and Henry Devalance uh, tried a prototype of implementing the Zcash peer-to-peer -peer networking protocol in Rust on top of the Tokyo async runtime. In Rust, you can have bring your own runtime to support how you do async operations uh, that the language comes with out of the box. And Tokyo is one of the most popular ways to do that. Um, and on top of that, there's a, a abstraction of uh, how you can have request response services called Tower that had become popular uh, from the company that does Linkerd. And we thought we could model the network service of how one talks to the peer-to-peer -peer Zcash network as a service. And we could make all these connections peer-to-peer -peer, um, <clears throat> independent, and we could load balance, and we could have back pressure, and we could use all these nice features of modern async Rust to make a really killer and really performant and really safe uh, like software safety safe uh, implementation of Zcash. That took about a month and a half, maybe two months to get that working. And we built a DNS seeder on top of it. And we thought, we think this is really good. We want to we want to roll with this and do a full implementation, kind of a from the ground up. All the points, all the pieces that were inherited from Bitcoin would be rewritten in this kind of async modular uh, fashion. And the board said yes. And so we were off and running. Um, and the original goal was uh, to have full chain state tracking and validation uh, by the end of April 2020 for uh, to validate the network upgrade three. Um, between when we kicked this project off, which was the fall of 2019, and now a lot of things have happened, <laughs> including a pandemic, people leaving the project, people joining the project, NU5 happening to Zcash. Uh, that was one of the big challenges for bringing Zebra to where it is today is that the world kept moving, including Zcash the protocol kept changing as we were trying to build a full consensus node in a way that as far as we know had never been done before which is fully modular so that the uh, the pieces that ver that validate the structures of our um, of the date of the chain and their pieces that are going on the wire are fully validated the networking piece is this own modular chunk the the consensus and batching and chain verification and block verification is its own modular chunk our state for contextual validation, it's, it's its own modular chunk and putting all of those together into a, a full uh, binary that we call Zebra D was its own chunk. Uh, we are not aware of anyone else doing it quite like that, um, but we did it. <laughs> um, the When NU5 activated in late May, 2022, Zebra was ready for that full validation. And we had all of our nodes just kind of running and then the, the block height ticked over and they kept on running and started validating Halo 2 proofs and Orchard Notes commitments and all that sort of stuff. Um, and that was a little over a year ago now. Between May 2022 and two weeks ago, we implemented RPC methods uh, to support anyone who just wants to make RPC calls to, uh, to Z Zebra D. 
uh, but also to be to serve as a full uh, light wallet deed backend. So if you wanted to talk to, if you're a wallet uh, that supports the light light client protocol, and you want to talk, you want to sync your wallet over over the light wallet protocol, um, but you want the speed and concurrency of Zebra and reliability of Zebra. Uh, we wanted to support that case. And we also supported RPC methods so that miners could use Zebra to get their block templates so that they could get what they, you know, a pre-populated block that's all sorted for them so that they could work on mining it. And then we got everything ready uh, and audited uh, to, to release our software as a, as, as a reliable piece of software that we would be able to support long-term as our 1.0 stable release. Um, and also this morning, uh, uh, the audit from the NCC group crypto cryptography services team got published. Um, we, we think we did a pretty good job. Uh, anything that was addressed in that audit has been uh, addressed uh, in some way or another. In the 1.0, and I think there was one more item that has already been merged into main, and that'll be released, I think, next week. Um, that is a lot. Uh, I think I have a time limit, but... <laughs> Uh, if you would like to learn more about um, how we design Zebra, um, please go to zebra.zfnd.org. We have a lovely section on the overview of our designs of different components uh, and the general architecture of Zebra. And then, of course, you can uh, come visit us on GitHub at github.com Zcash Foundation slash Zebra. And I think I'm done. Sorry, I was having problems finding the unmute button <laughs> to many screen. Thank you, Deidre, for that uh, interesting history lesson. Uh, let's jump in to the showcase now, starting with uh, Dior, uh, who's going to show briefly talk about Docker and, and some other exciting things. Or you're muted. Sorry about that. So this is what it looks like to run Zebra right now. You can run Zebra's first stable release using Docker. That's how we're publishing our binary releases at the moment. So when you run the command, Zebra will start up and it'll start doing things on the network. And you'll see a whole bunch of logs. You can find the full Docker command to run Zebra on the Zebra download page on the foundation's website. So uh, yeah, Zebra will start syncing. And then a few days later, two, three, four days, depending on your network latency, it will reach the end of the chain and activate its mempool. So I'm just gonna finish that up and shift over to showing some more of our experimental features. So. Over the last few weeks, we've got some feedback that uh, our first ever release has been great and want to thank everybody for all of the amazing positive feedback we've been getting, but we're keen to make Zebra even better. So particularly, we've had some feedback that a whole bunch of logs, uh, when they're scrolling past, it's hard to see what Zebra is doing. So when you start up Zebra over the next few releases, uh, this is the kind of thing you might see. So uh, what you'll see is there will be a cute Zebra logo when you start up. That's coming very soon. And a nice welcome message to thank you for uh, joining the Zcash network and contributing to the health of the network. So that's what you'll see there. And uh, we want to know, we want people to know that we appreciate them running Zebra and that it's important to the health of the network that people are running nodes and that they are contributing. Everybody who runs a node contributes to the health of the network because the nodes all work together to validate the chain and to share around blocks and transactions. So uh, over the next few releases, we're hoping to work on getting progress bars into Zebra. 
So those of you who run Zcash-D will know that you can see some uh, syncing progress for Zcash-D. Uh, in Zebra, things happen a little differently uh, because they're a bit more parallel. So we wanted to show a bit more of uh, what's happening while Zebra is running. So uh, at the moment, what we're showing in these progress bars is you can see the number of peers and how many peers that your node knows about, uh, how many peers it's tried to contact, and how many peers it hasn't been able to connect to for whatever reason. Uh, you'll be able to see the number of inbound and outbound connections. This node has had a whole bunch of connections uh, because it's trying to sync a whole bunch of blocks. And then when your node is syncing initially, you'll see a bunch of different progress bars in terms of uh, how Zebra's checkpointing. So Zebra uses checkpoints to efficiently validate the first few million blocks of the chain because everybody agrees on what those blocks are and where the money's gone over the last um, over the last few years. And so, yeah, we'll show you where Zebra's up to with its checkpoints and then show you what it's um, been able to do there. So those progress bars might take a, a little while for us to iron out all of the bugs, but we're hoping them to have them in a release that's coming up very soon. Uh, but we'd love to hear from you what kinds of progress you'd like to see in Zebra, because maybe showing you 10 kinds of progress enough at, uh, at the same time is a bit too much. Maybe we could leave that for a detailed mode and maybe we can just show you the block syncing, for example, and, may, and how many peers are connected. So that's what you'll see uh, hopefully in an upcoming release when you start up Zebra. And then in the tradition of all good demos, here's one I prepared earlier. And uh, what you'll see when Zebra finishes and gets to the tip is that you'll see that it's finished syncing and then Zebra starts doing full validation. And so when Zebra is doing full validation, you'll see it tracking multiple chain forks at the same time, if there's been a fork on the network recently, and you'll see that it's launched uh, the mempool. So you'll be able to see how many transactions are in the mempool and uh, how big the mempool is, and then uh, a few other stats about the mempool. So we're hoping to be able to bring that to you soon. Um, and yeah, maybe in this display, you can see a few weird numbers and we're hoping to fix those bugs before we make this stable. So you can try this out right now by uh, compiling with the progress bars feature and then running Zebra and it will automatically configure logging to a file and do a bunch of things like that to set that up for you. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you, Tior. That was, uh, that was fun. Um, let's see who's next. That was just the c start, the progress pass experimental feature that Tior showed us. And next is Alfredo with c metrics. Thank you, PD. Um, so I'm going to try to show some ways that people have to retrieve data from Zebra, also from the Zcash network and from the Zcash blockchain. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So there it is. You should be able to see a terminal. Um, so, as Deidre mentioned, it, Zebra has support for RPC methods. So, we expose a port with an RPC endpoint. Uh, the people or application can make uh, different requests to it. So, the most classic way to do that is maybe by curl. So, here we are calling a get info method. Um, the server responds us with some information. Zebra support a bunch of other RPC calls. So 
this was was get blockchain info. Um, so Zebra does not support all the RPC methods that are supported by Zcash. We added the methods for use cases. We added the RPC methods needed for Light Wallet D, and then later we added RPC methods for mining support. But some calls are generic enough to be able to make other things. And we and the several team are open to add more RPC methods. And if you have a good use case, we will be happy to consider for the addition. Um, so another way you have to interact with Zebra for people that are used to Zcash is by the Zcash command line interface. Um, so this is pretty similar to the cool thing, but the format is a bit shorter. So here is the same call to get info. Uh, other more interested call, interesting calls could be uh, the request for a block. So here we are requesting the block to one to one. We can, uh, we support some verbose mode or different modes for get the block, with different information. Um, we support uh, a call to the mempool, which is empty right now because the node that I am requesting is synchronizing, so it doesn't have a mempool transaction yet. Uh, but yeah, that's another way you have to interact with Zebra. So another one for the command line options is a wallet. I tried a while ago which uh, has been done by Aditya, written in Rust, and this uses a like wallet D as the backend. So I tried this a while back and it worked. It has some problems, but it's another command line option. So any other command line that could call and make requests to, a, to an RPC endpoint uh, will, will work with Zebra just the same way it works with Zcash. Um, Another way to get data from Zebra um, is by using the metrics. So I'm going to show you this is a tutorial on how to configure metrics for Zebra. How it works is pretty much, um, I'll put an example. So Zebra is trying all the time to get new blocks from the network. When it gets new blocks, it tries to verify them. Once a block is verified, Zebra will store in an internal database. When it finished doing that, it, Zebra has a line of code that will say, increase the verifier counter to plus one. So we can read that in the metrics later. We do a bunch of these for the network. We, when we connect to a peer, we log that. Uh, when we log some specifics about the peer, about how uh, how the connection is and stuff like that. So if you follow this, you will end up with um, a Grafana endpoint, which is what we use for what, what we use for reading these metrics. I'm going to show how the Grafana looks. So Zebra has a bunch of predefined dashboards that I have imported into this Grafana instance. This is a testnet and it's not synchronized, so it's not very populated, but it has data in the different dashboards. This is about checkpointing, which is what my instance is doing right now. Uh, errors, empty, luckily. I'm not sure what those, those errors are. Well, mempool is empty because it's synchronizing. Network help. I will show you bytes, stuff about peers. Uh, Grafana is pretty cool. You can move around uh, the different charts from one way to the other. Um, I'm going to set this change. Uh, different network messaging. You can go back in history. Let's say the last 24 hours. I have been synchronizing this a few times today. Um, let's check another one. Information about peers. 
uh, this is the DNS seeders of the testnet with our only two uh, compatible peers, also net peers, we have known the user agent, the peers user. And we are open to improve these dashboards and also add new stuff as needed. Uh, this is synchronizing a status. And yeah, that's pretty much it about Grafana. And the last thing I want to show is an experimental feature, which is store blocks from the Zcash network into an elastic search database. Um, I'm going to show a tutorial that we have written to how to get started in that on the steps you have to do to have that, that functioning in your own local node. Uh, so the idea here is, um, for example, Again, when Zebra is looking for blocks all the time, and when it gets a new block, it verifies, and it reaches to a state into that is finalized. This means that this is irreversible. And when that happens, Zebra stores the block in an internal database. What we are doing here is, in addition to storing into the internal database, we are also exporting this block of data into Elasticsearch, which is another database. So to run something like this, you need at least double of the resources because there is some redundant data. The block will be saved in two different places. And the benefit of storing data in uh, Elasticsearch is that it gives you fast indexing. So you can request a history of the blockchain data uh, pretty fast. So the community sometimes speak about deprecating, for example, the transparent uh, transactions. Uh, with this thing, we can figure out how many transparent transactions do we have, how many of them in the last time, uh, and how much business from the Zcash network are we taking away if we depre deprecate these transactions, how much money is being moved, and um, questions like that. Uh, Elasticsearch came together with a front end to visualize data, which is Kibana. I'll, I'll show you Kibana. Okay, so this is Kibana. I'm not an expert of it, but um, this has all the blocks. Let's take a look in the last 30 days because it's still synchronizing. This is the number of blocks that were added to the database in the last 30 days. You can explore the fields of the block. Uh, here's something to improve. This could be changed to a hexadecimal string to avoid some space. Not all the fields make sense. In this block, I could be particularly interested in the B4 transactions um, and these values of, of SEC that was moved on, on that transaction. Uh, Kibana is very powerful. For example, you can see the entire history of the testnet blockchain in this case pretty easily. So in the last year, there was this amount of blocks, but we can go up to seven years and see the entire blockchain history. Um, Kibana allows you to create dashboards. Zebra does not have any predefined dashboards as it does with Grafana, but we may want to add in the future. Here's just a demo dashboard that I was playing earlier today. So um, yeah, so this is the transaction of all kinds that we have. And you can explore specific period of times. You can keep going on and see the granularity of this thing up to the number of minutes or whatever. So for example, here, 
let's say that at this time we had 12 B4 transactions and four, sorry, 12 B4 transactions, yeah, and four B5 transactions. Uh, I'm not an expert on this, so I would like people to help me out to how to make more cool dashboards here. Uh, yes, so that's all I have. So I pass the ball to Pili again. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Alfredo. That was uh, that was great to see some of the, the cool visualizations we can do. Um, so let's go back to the slides. So right now we've been showing you some of the full node functionality. So the functionality to validate blocks, but uh, Zebra can also act as a light wallet D backend. And this is what John is going to be showing us next. Uh, yes, thank you, Peely. Um, my, my name is John. I am the Community Support Coordinator at the Zcash Foundation, and I am going to very simply demonstrate the a transaction from a desktop white wallet broadcast through a Zebra node. If I can share my screen. There we go. Uh, the transaction is prepared, so we'll go ahead and, and just send it. Now, what's going on here isn't particularly special. The wallet will compute the transaction indicated by the transaction ID here uh, and broadcast to the Light Wallet D server, which is running here. Uh, the Light Wallet D server then communicates that to the Zcash node connected to the network. I just happen to have those two instances running locally, which also helps visualize the typical setup. Uh, the transaction information goes out to the miners on the network where it gets included into a block template to be solved. And once one of them finds the next valid block solution, um, it's broadcast back to the network and eventually comes back to our node here. Uh, this information is communicated back to the Light Wallet D ser uh, server and then back to our wallet, which once that occurs, will update the balance. Um, that time can vary between a few minutes and a few seconds. Uh, now, you personally don't have to have all of these things running locally, your own Light Wallet D server and Zebra node, um, in order to connect a Zcash Light Wallet, including mobile wallets, to a Zebra node. Uh, currently, you can use the address shown here, zebra-lwd.zecwallet.co colon 9067. Um, this can be set as the custom server address in the wallet settings. Uh, simply select custom server and paste the address seen uh, I showed just a second ago. Um, this address is the internal server connected to my internal uh, server. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, after you do that, Select OK, and then you will connect to a public Light Wallet D server that is connected to a Zebra node. Um, now, while we wait just a moment for the balance to update, uh, I'll touch back on my role as a community support coordinator, which I gleaned over in the introduction. Uh, a large part of my job is seeking out people um, and helping them with Zcash related problems. Most of them, them occur with wallets, but there are more exotic issues and stuff like that. So while I can't always help, I will do my best to try to find help in getting resolution for a particular issue. Um, so if you ever have a Zcash related issue or know of somebody who does, then please feel free to reach out to the Zcash community forum, uh, the Zcash Foundation Twitter. There's also the Zcash Foundation Discord. Um, also, if you're interested in learning more about running Zebra and your own Light Wallet D server locally, like how I'm doing here, um, you can go to the Zcash Foundation GitHub Zebra repo and find all of the documentation, as well as the uh, Zcash Foundation YouTube, where there is a video tutorial that covers how to set up and run all of this. Um, like I said, it's not required, but it does have certain privacy advantages with not having to broadcast 
um, request for transaction information out to the world. This is all kept on my local machine. There are no ports opened up to the outside world. It's just this wallet right here. That's about it. I'm just kind of waiting for this transaction to go through. I was hoping it would. Sometimes, like I said, it takes a few minutes just for the blocks. But that's about all I have. We've waited this long. Maybe we can wait just a few more seconds. Course we don't have to if you don't want to that's okay <laughs> it's the demo effect john <laughs> can't be helped Josh, uh, had some music ready to play during this point <laughs> okay i think uh I think, should we move on, John? Up to you. I don't okay. know. Mind. Yeah. Go ahead. It'll you can always uh, ping us and we will switch right over to you and, uh, and share the transaction. Uh, go through. Cool. Okay, so I'll just share my screen again. So thank you, John. Um, so there is one final piece of functionality that we want to talk about today, and that's the ability for Zebra to generate block templates for miner, mining. And uh, Ari is going to talk to us a little bit about that. Thank you, Haley. Hey, so uh, Zebra has recently added RPCs for miners, get block templates, submit block, and common peripheral methods. I'll go through some highlights in the next few slides and then walk through a test. So. Starting with the centerpiece, get block template. This requires a new config field, minor address, which is a transparent serialized address. It implements block construction per zip 317, returns from lock, uh, long polling within 150 milliseconds of a chain tip change, and supports proposal mode. Moving on to submit block, it decodes hex data and deserializes the submitted block. Then it calls the uh, block verifier to validate and commit the block, which is the same process as blocks downloaded from peers. Uh, and very similar to proposal mode. Now, a couple quick comments on concurrency before we look at that test. Uh, parallel CPU threads uh, defines how many threads the RPC server will try and use. Zebra updates its state concurrently without blocking read access for RPC request handlers. Um, and now to see one of the get block template tests. Uh, this test that I'm about to show runs on the main branch and PR updates, tests about a thousand get block uh, template responses as block proposals per test run, and tests that long polling returns within 150 seconds of the chain to change or it would occasionally fail. And I have already started the test because it takes a little while to run. Um, it's still running. It's still syncing. So this test syncs first, and then the important part that we're going to look at is test templates as proposals, which just in a loop runs this function many, many times. Um, and what this function does is it gets a template, gets the long pull ID, makes a long pull request in case there's a new template before the, the proposal results finish. Uh, it converts the templates to proposals, and it submits them uh, to the get block template method as block proposals. What the get block template method does in proposal mode is checks that the proposed block would be committed if it had the correct solution, but it doesn't check the solution. Um, and that's all I have to show except for this test passing, but it's taking a little longer than I expected. That's fine. We can, we can wait a little a little bit um okay do you want to explain a little happening. bit about what we can show in the test or anything else uh 
Sure. So this test is slightly modified from the one that we're actually running to make a lot of RPC calls at once to show the parallel RPCs. Uh, besides that, it shows that the long pull request will return with a submit old of false within 150 milliseconds of the chain tip changing, uh, or this test would fail occasionally. Uh, and it does that with an interrupt here. So it sends a, a new template that has a submit old of false uh, down a channel. And if it receives an item in that channel, it will skip the proposal results and try again for that particular test run. This is still syncing, so it's probably going to take at least a few more minutes. I think we can come back to this. Uh, I covered everything I want to cover. Okay, thank you, Aria. Shall I take over the screen from you again? Please. Okay. So that was the get block template. Thank you, Aria, for showing us that. And uh, we encourage you to try out this feature. And uh, if you if you are a mining pool or if you do some solo mining and want to try it out, if there are any features that are missing, please let us know. Um, we're very happy to, to try and implement some of these uh, for you. And so finally, I want to share with you some of the ways that you can like, contribute to Zebra and help us out if you wish to do so. So first of all, you can go off and download and run the Zebra node uh, and tell us how it's working. You know, are there any bugs that you can see? Is there anything that's not working as you expect? Uh, anything that is confusing? Um, so um, if you want, you can report these to us on GitHub. The link is up there. And also you can find us on the Zcash Foundation Discord. So yes, just let us know if there's any new features that you'd like to see. We also have forum posts announcing the Zebra stable release. So we are reading the comments and we are taking them on board. Uh, so this helps us to prioritize what we work on next. So also please vote on the poll um, to let us know if you're running a node, if Zebra covers your use cases, and if it doesn't, why not? And maybe we can do something about that. Um, all, all of this feedback is very helpful for us to continue to develop Zebra for Zcash users and for the Zcash ecosystem. So that is the end of the call today. Uh, thank you very much to everyone for listening. Thank you to the team for participating and uh, we hope you found it interesting and helpful. And um, yeah, maybe we can do some more of these in the future. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>